You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weeks, and today I am joined by a special guest upgrader. It's Damon Lenz. Hello, it is me. Hello again. I'm the podcast guy, (laughs) and I love being here, and I love vampires. (laughs) Yes, today we are upgrading the brand new Blood Rites precon from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. This is the Black White Vampire precon. Uh, and in, you know, in the Ixalan world, the vampires are conquistadors. Yes. They're, they're conquerors. Uh, but also they're a staple of this, uh, of this plane. Uh, in this episode, we are going to talk about the, what comes in the deck. We're going to talk about what it comes in it mechanically and financially. We're going to give you 10 cards to add to this deck to make sure that it is in fighting shape for your next game night. We're going to take 10 cards out as we have to to make room for the 10 new ones. And we're going to do so on a budget of $50. We're going to talk about a lot of magic cards today. If you want to pick them up or this sealed commander deck, go over to cardkingdom.com slash command. Card Kingdom has a huge selection of magic cards so that when you are building a new deck, maybe you're building Clavileño from scratch, or maybe you're picking up the precon. You can get those and all of the cards that you need for the upgrade in one spot, and they will ship it to you in one safe package. I trust Card Kingdom, especially when I'm buying a deck because I want all of my cards to show up so I can get sleeved and get playing. And Card Kingdom has the professionalism to get them to you safe and in the condition that I purchase them in, which is really important to me. Again, support the show and pick up some sweet magic cards over at cardkingdom.com slash command. And once those cards are in your hand, you are going to need to protect them. You can do so while supporting the show over at ultrapro.com slash command. UltraPro has all of the highest quality magic accessories in the business. Plus, they have all of the officially licensed magic art. And for Ixalan, that is a very big deal because the art for this set is incredible. Oh, yeah. I have the Clavileño playmat in front of me. He's got classic spooky vampire face. You have some of the Mesoamerican inspired art here. Absolutely stunning. The colors are so bold and so fun to have on a playmat. And you can pick those up at Ultra Pro, along with the sleeves and the deck boxes and the play mats that you are looking for. We trust Ultra Pro with our collection, especially when I travel. I like knowing that my decks are going to be safe when I travel, and I trust Ultra Pro to do that. Again, ultrapro.com slash command. The final way to support us is directly go to patreon.com slash command zone. All of our patrons get access to exclusive content like turn talk, where we talk about the game that just happened on extra turns and what would have happened if we had one more turn or one more land or ah, if I had drawn two more cards, I could have gotten there. Uh, so make sure that you become a patron to get access to that. But also you get to see game nights and extra turns a day early without ads so no spoilers for you and no pausing to wait and see what happens after the ad break all of our patrons get access to that ad free plus we shout out one lucky patron every single podcast episode and this one is Is dedicated dedicated to to first First order Order wookie Wookie. (laughs) 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 wookie you rock you absolutely rock keep doing great things wookie all right, let's get into this main topic. We are talking about the Blood Rights Vampire Precon. And before we get into upgrading the deck, we like to get to know it a little bit better so we know what kind of deck we're actually upgrading. And what better way to get to know a deck than by starting with the commanders? That's right. So the first commander, the face commander, as you alluded to earlier, is Clavileño. First of the hashtag blessed. <laughs> He's a one, a white, and a black for a 2 2 legendary va- uh, creature, vampire cleric. It's good that he's employed. You yeah. know, very important. I like a vampire with a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, he's not just sucking the life out mm-hmm. of you. He's he's actually, you know, employed. A, yeah. a contributing member to society. It's kind of <laughs> nice. Uh, and then whenever you attack, just attack. It doesn't have to be with him. Just mm-hmm. whenever you attack, target attacking vampire that isn't a demon becomes a demon in addition to its other types and it gains when this creature dies you draw a card and you create a tapped four three white and black vampire demon creature token with flying this is very interesting because it's an attack trigger that sets up like a delayed 
dies trigger Mm -hmm. on one attacking vampire every turn. So it asks you to have vampires, it asks you to attack, and it wants those vampires to die and then replaces them with pretty sizable beaters, right? Yeah, 4 3 flyer. flyer. And you draw a card is, uh, I guess the the vampire is tapped, but it can still attack next turn. Yeah, I, this seems like a very aggressive vampire build to me. Yeah, it actually reminds me a lot of uh, Blitz. That was the first thing I thought of when I saw this, sure. where you're like, you get an aggressive thing, it puts a delayed draw card on the creature, and then when that creature leaves any time, mm-hmm. you, get, you get to replace it. And this does that, and then also gives you the body. So you're not even down a permanent on the battlefield, which is really cool. Yeah, and, and you're up a card. Exactly. And uh, true that the thing comes in tapped, but if you have, let's say, sack outlets, mm-hmm. you sacrifice at the end step before your turn. So you immediately get it on tap with it. And a 4-3 flyer is, is pretty substantial. Yeah, I mean, if you have a couple of vampires that you set up to be demons and people aren't blocking them because they don't want it to turn into a demon and you suddenly have a sack outlet and can, you know, sack your whole board and untap with four, four threes, that's a huge amount of flying damage that people aren't necessarily ready for. Plus, you've just drawn four cards, which is crazy. Uh, Of note with this, uh, that ability is permanent on the Mm -hmm. thing. So even if he gets removed, that creature is the thing that gets that ability. Right. So just make sure if you're playing this deck that you're keeping good track of the things that you've hit mm-hmm. and he can't pick the same thing twice because you've now turned it into a, a, a demon in addition to its other right. types use like a, the marbles or coins or any sort of marker i've used like the infinite infinite tokens like disc things yeah those work to, great. to just mark what has become a demon already because again it is one per attack uh and yes it is permanent yep and uh the <laughs> the other thing is uh don't forget it doesn't work with changelings yeah because they're yep. all already demons they're demons yeah so. You'll have to find some vampires. I don't know how we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, let's meet the backup commander here. Uh, the second in command, the the backup singer of the deck. It is Carmen, Cruel Sky Marcher. Carmen is a 2-2 flyer for three, a white, and a black. It says, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, put a plus one counter on Carmen Cruel Sky Marcher and you gain one life. Whenever any player sacrifices any permanent, she gets a counter and you gain a life. Whenever Carmen attacks, return up to one target permanent card with mana value less than or equal to Carmen's power from your graveyard to the battlefield. Of course, she is a vampire soldier. So this is doing something completely different. I mean, this encourages, this seems like a really wild with treasure tokens or clue tokens or um lands lands fetch like lands. fetch lands trigger her yep. uh and you can return them to the battlefield it doesn't say non-land permanent so carmen's ramp she's recursion she's huge um there's a lot going on here but it isn't necessarily vampire specific no uh, she just cares are you sacrificing things or are things even being sacrificed and yeah, i think that's generally. i think that's the big thing is like mm-hmm. you play it and then if your opponent has treasure tokens you're just like use those anytime you like yeah. i'm gonna be gaining life my commander's gonna get bigger it also lends itself really well to voltron because it's pumping itself and it has evasion right and then you just get the gravy of basically getting a sun titan trigger every time she attacks and she, since yeah. it scales with her with the game it's pretty powerful and you can start getting some very large uh, permanents back to the battlefield. Okay. So Carmen's doing something a little bit different. You can see how she works with Clavileño. If you sacrifice those little vampires, she can bring it back, gets a counter, gain some life, and uh, you can do the whole demon dance again. Okay. So those are the two possible commanders out of the box. There are some more in the 99, but we're just going to talk about the new ones. Uh, Like you could put, there's a, there's a reprint in here that could also go in the command zone. Um, But before we decide which of those we are going to put in the command zone, we have to break down what is actually in the deck. Let's get to know the deck mechanically a little bit, which means we're going to talk about the stats. Very good. Thank you. Good stats. I'm a a professional uh, stats. Men? Men. Stats man. Yeah, just just like a statesman spelled wrong. Yeah, Yeah. but statsman. But a statsman. Yes. Mm. (laughs) All right, just like we do every time, we like to break down each deck into its vegetables. So what, how many of each kind of things that go in every commander deck does this deck have so we know what to do when we are upgrading? And we're going to start with the very basics, with ramp. Yeah, so in terms of ramp, this deck actually has nine pieces of ramp. Okay. 
Yeah. So nine's a little bit lower than we tend to see in these decks, but looking at Clavileño and even Carmen, this deck could have a very low curve overall. Yeah, I'm really looking at the Clavileño because mm. he's a three drop that you really want to have something already in play when he comes in, mm. which means you're not typically trying to ramp onto if you'd rather have a vampire down before he comes down. So you right. can immediately get that attack trigger. So I anticipate a much lower mana curve for that reason. So mm-hmm. I think a little bit less ramp makes sense. Yeah. I do think if you were going more Carmen, I'd want more because you just want yeah. her in play as soon as possible. She's a five drop with an attack trigger and benefits from things happening on the board. Yeah, right. you do want Carmen on the board a little faster. So I would expect with Carmen, you'd probably have, what, 11 yeah. pieces of ramp or 12, depending on how fast you really want to go. Right. But nine is respectable, especially with a low curve. All right, next category is card draw. You have 10 pieces of card draw in this deck. Okay, that's fairly standard. Generally, I want a little bit more, especially if I'm doing an aristocrat strategy where I'm sacrificing my cards. But you do have card draw in the command zone with Clavileño. So if that is the direction that you're going, you've got a little bit of card draw that you always have access to. Yeah, and it's really nice that he's repeatable. Mm. Because as long as you have enough vampires every attack, then you'll be able to keep triggering him and keep having each of your boards slowly become demons that Mm. replace themselves so over the course of a game he's going to draw you several cards which is really nice you would think so especially on a three drop commander if he dies or in a board wipe or something like that you can recast him for five and that doesn't feel backbreaking all right the next category is targeted interaction this is a black white deck you usually expect to see a lot of it in a deck like this but as we've looked at it is these decks are a little bit more well clavileno seems very aggressive so maybe less Yeah, so the number there is actually eight, Hmm, which is low. Yeah, that's what I tend to run, which is too low. (laughs) Yeah, it's also interesting because for me personally, if I'm running an aggressive deck, I want a pretty healthy amount of removal because Mm. sometimes you just need to remove that pesky 4-4 so you can get in on somebody. Give yourself a clean attack. So I would want, I think, a little bit more. And since this is a vampire deck, there are a surprising amount of vampires that act as removal spells. So you can get cross interaction, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, So eight is low to me. Yeah, it feels like this could be bulked up, Uh, but maybe they make up for it in the next category which is board wipes so we have three board wipes okay that's about normal yeah. i mean two to three is where i tend to live yeah, that's where most I decks especially if i'm playing a heavily recursive deck i like to play three or even four sometimes because i know i will rebuild faster right so three seems respectable to me especially if we can get some one-sided stuff in there for clavileno and finally the lands yeah i got 37 of them which uh love it yeah that's fine Good place to start. There are 21 basic lands in this deck, which leaves, what, 16 non-basic reprints in the deck. Pretty good. Yeah. I would like to see probably a a couple more non-basic lands in a deck like this, but we're not going to touch the mana base today. Yeah. All right. So that tells you generally the health of the deck, but we like to break down the deck in terms of what it is doing specifically, what makes this deck special. Uh, Starting with the biggest category, of course, it is... Vampires. How many vampires are in this deck? We have 36 vampires. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of vampires. That's a lot. I'm very happy with it. As is the case for a lot of these precons, uh, spoiler alert, they are really, really dedicated to the creature type. Yep. Like there's like 35 dinosaurs in the dinosaur precon or something yep. like that. So, and normally when we build a deck like this, we're talking between 25 and 30 is like a regular healthy amount. So to be above that means the deck is highly synergistic and really, really toned toward the type. Yeah, which is great because Wizards likes vampires. They, they print do. a lot of them. They love them. And, and they're so incidental. It's like human. You're like, that's a vampire? No way. Yeah. And especially because like we had Ixalan, we had Midnight Hunt, Crimson Vow. Innistrad. Ba- yeah. Innist- like, yeah, the Innistrad sets. Now we're back here. And then they just throw in random little vampires here and there. Like mm. there's a bunch in March of the Machine. Yeah. And so over the course of time, we keep getting just great vampires that have little tiny abilities like i said there's a ton of vampires that act as removal Mm. vampires have quite a bit lords and uh it's really easy now for vampire decks to fill out their slots that would normally go to spells to creatures yeah uh, and having those be vampires so which is great with both of these commanders yeah anything that you can put on a permanent or on a vampire is really going to make your synergy work better and you can see that this deck is really tuned toward vampires because there are 23 cards in the deck that care about vampires specifically yeah which is awesome like i'm that's great 
So this, I mean, this, there's 36 in the deck, so it seems like they're going to work well. <laughs> yeah. And the nice thing is a lot of those Vampire Matters cards are themselves vampires. Mm-hmm. I and mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's just so much now cross synergy with vampires that it's very easy to make a very strong and cohesive deck. And this deck, I think, has done that. Yeah. Next up is Dies Triggers. So we have Carmen that cares about sacrificing permanence, but Clavileño is a Dies Trigger himself. Uh, So we wanted to see how dedicated this deck is to this sort of pseudo vampire aristocrat strategy. So we have 16 Dies Triggers. Okay, that's That's a pretty healthy amount. That says that the deck really does want the creatures to both attack, but also die. Yeah. The next category that, of course, goes with dies triggers is sack outlets. How in control of things dying are we? Uh, we have eight sack outlets. That's not terrible. It's a not little bad. low, and that's worth noting that there's a, a couple in here that are cost mana to activate, yep. or only activate once per turn, or just once. Right. So I think that number is a little lower than I would expect in a deck that has so many things dedicated. To dying. Yeah, and you really want control over Clavileño's uh, ability. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to remove your creatures uh, when you want them gone, when you need that card draw, and mm-hmm. to get that flyer. Because, you know, early game, you're running all these one and two drops, you get the attack trigger, that's great. But then as the game goes on, they become less impactful. Mm-hmm. So being able to trade them in for a 4-3 flyer and a card is very good. So sack outlets are important. Yep. This next category is token makers. Neither Carmen nor Clavileño care if it is a token vampire or not. So having something that just makes throwaway pieces is really important in an aristocrat deck yep. or any deck that cares about dies triggers generally. And so we have 11 token makers. Wow. Yeah. I mean, vampires are really, really tokeny these days that black white makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And the fact that you get to make a lot makes all your vampire synergy stronger and makes it it easier for things to die without sacrificing cards. Yeah, exactly. And as you mentioned, like Clavileño, uh, it just cares if the attacking thing was a vampire. Mm. It doesn't care if it's a token. So you can trade that token in for another token and a card. Yeah, now you're up a card rather than spending a card to get a card. Exactly. Finally, we have attack triggers. Clavileño also cares about your creatures attacking. Yep. So I wanted to see how dedicated it was to that. Maybe we were more dies, maybe we were more attacks. And we have seven attack triggers. Okay. So a solid enough amount, but clearly secondary to dying. Yeah. Dying seems to be the most important thing in this thing, which makes sense because they're vampires. They're vampires. And very religious. It is funny. (laughs) Vampires can't easily die no <laughs> so like <laughs> but they 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 rest in their crypts sure. so that's them dying and mm-hmm. then they come back later right yeah. right 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 you know every every time you go to bed at night you're dying you're dying a, a little, little bit, bit. yeah <laughs> no, right. this just got like very philosophical <laughs> when you go to sleep at night are you dead <laughs> mm, you could be yeah. you don't know <laughs> yeah and actually when you rest that's the amount of time it takes for the world to populate right mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're just rebooting yeah exactly All right, having looked at the statistics in this deck, uh, who should you run as your commander? Uh, This one was a pretty easy pick. Uh, Definitely Clavileño. Um, This deck just lends itself more to him because it is a dedicated vampire strategy. Uh, Carmen really doesn't care about the vampire creature type specifically. Um, I think you can build a really cool deck uh, with her. It just goes in a, a different direction. You're making more tokens, doing a lot of the treasure thing. Again, sack, sack lands and stuff like that. Uh, but with Clavileño, it's like, I am doing vampires. I am being aggressive and I'm doing the aristocrats thing, which is what the deck is designed to do. Right. Uh, this seems to be the case for all for all of the precons from Lost Caverns of Ixalan is they have the face commander, which is more a dedicated creature type commander, and then they have the backup commander, which does something sort of related to the creature type, but not necessarily focused on it. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. And that I agree that Clavelanio is an easy in the command zone for this one. Although I'm looking forward to seeing some cool Carmen builds out there. Oh yeah, it seems like a sweet deck. All right, so we've gotten to know the deck mechanically a little bit. We are going to get into what comes in the box financially if you pick it up from Card Kingdom or elsewhere, your local game store. And then we are going to do an upgrade. But first, we have a few words from our sponsors. Okay, focus. We just got to find the right line. Okay, yeah, so if I play Scorpion Strike, then you can boost with Vengeance of Stone. Or I could play Incredible Strength and I could save Vengeance to discard later. Yes. This is not magic. What are you guys playing? <laughs> this is Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto. It's a tactical card game where you play as adventurers descending into a dangerous lair. You use your unique skill cards to conquer challenges and reach the final boss. Yeah, it's super easy to learn, but you have to play smart to win. You got to think about sequencing, resource management, threat assessment. It really uses a lot of your skills for magic. 
project. Yeah, the entire box is only 20 bucks and we've gotten a lot out of it. it. Takes about an hour to play and each game is different than the last. Ooh, and look at the cards. Yeah, the art is really sweet and check out that foiling on the back. Right now you can play with one or two people, but that's going up to four next year with an expansion. It's really perfect for a commander pot, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Nice, so why doesn't Jimmy just play coup de gras? What? Oh yeah, that's way better. Wait a minute, how did- Reading the card explains the card. <laughs> Order Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto right now at kinfiredelve.com and use code COMMAND10 at checkout for 10% off. Again, that's kinfiredelve.com with code COMMAND10 or find it at your local game store starting November 21st. Kinfire Delve Vainglory's Grotto. It's a whole lot of game for just 20 bucks. You know what every Magic player loves? A two for one. Ugh, getting that value over your opponents feels amazing. Yeah, two for ones are great. But you know what's even better value this holiday season? Hmm. Mint Mobile. Right now, when you buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan, you can get three more months for free. That's six months of premium wireless service for the price of only three. Whoa, a six for three? So the legends are true. Of course, with Mint Mobile, the value's already there. Plans start at just 15 bucks a month and all come with unlimited talk, text, and data on the nation's largest 5G network. Unlimited? That's like going infinite. It's easy to switch over your old phone, and if you do need a new one, you can get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan, but only for a limited time. Limited time? We're on a two-turn clock. We gotta act fast. Exactly. So switch to Mint Mobile today and take advantage of their best deals of the year. You know what magic term that sounds like? What? A win. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free by going to mintmobile.com slash command. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash command. Hey, what you doing? I wanted to give out some cool Game Nights gifts for the holidays this year, so I'm making custom GK throw pillows. Nice, how's it looking? Like this. My God, is that our logo? What? Drawing on pillows is hard. Rachel, if you want heartfelt handcrafted gifts, you should just go on Etsy. Every year I find independent sellers on Etsy to make gifts for friends, family, and business associates. Like those comfy Game Nights blankets the office got last year, I had them custom made on Etsy. Oh, I love that blanket. Yeah, I found cutting boards, wine stoppers, the options are endless. And for any budget, on Etsy you're bound to find something totally unique and perfect for everyone on your gift list. We even use Etsy to make the Game Nights Live Championship belts and crown. I won one of those. You sure did. Do you mind if I see the pillow? Yeah, do you like it? I love it, it's gonna keep me warm in the winter, cause I'm gonna burn it. Josh! New to Etsy? Use the code HOLIDAY10 for 10% off your first purchase. Again, that's code HOLIDAY10. Maximum discount value of $50 expires December 31st, 2023. See terms at etsy.com slash terms. For handcrafted and affordable gifts for everyone on your list, Etsy has it. Shop etsy.com. Welcome back, everybody. We are talking about the Blood Rites or Lost Caverns of Ixalan pre-con. This is the vampire one. We just broke down the stats mechanically. Now we're going to talk about what comes in this box financially. What are you getting when you spend your hard-earned cash on this pre-con? Which means we're talking about reprint value. A couple of caveats before we get started. Of course, the numbers that we are talking about only represent the value of the reprints in the deck. There are 68 reprints, so there is a sizable chunk of this deck that isn't represented in the cost. Uh, there are 11 new cards that just won't be calculated in any of these numbers. Uh, and all of these values are taken at time of recording, which is before this deck is announced. So that means all of these reprint values will go down when they're announced, which is how reprints work. But we use this number and we compare it to the numbers that we've taken for previous precons. So it's more of a relative number rather than a specific value at the time that you can pick up this deck. Um, that being said, these decks are currently pre-ordering for about $40, which is what we've come to expect from set pre-cons. Um, really excited to see this back down to 40. There have been a lot of pre-cons that have come out this year that are more than 40 and sometimes significantly more than 40. Um, so to have these at $40 makes them a lot more accessible than the pre-cons that we've been talking about recently. All of those caveats out of the way... What is the reprint value for this deck? The reprint value for the uh, for the vampire deck is one hundred and sixty dollars. <laughs> That's so high. That is lots and lots of money. That's the church money that these uh, vampires have. You know, what I'm saying? I, yeah, that's, that's a real <laughs> family money. Yeah, they've been collecting on. their tithes. One hundred and sixty dollars like, for a forty dollar precon 
is here's the crazy thing about this. This value is higher than the average reprint value for every single other precon that has come out this year. Wow, really? For every other set. So not like individual yeah, precons, yeah, yeah. but like for every other average for every set, it is higher than that regardless of shelf price. Wow. So there are precons that were $80 this year. This is higher than the <laughs> average value. Vampires represent. Right? The reprint value for Ixalan is amazing and uh, i want you to be clear on how good it is because the average reprint value for all will be one precons so there were two re- two precons for all will be one was 101 dollars and 20 cents for march of the machine it averaged to 97 dollars for lord of the rings it averaged to 126 dollars and 44 cents remember lord of the rings precons were a little bit more expensive these days they're even more expensive it's true the commander masters precons famously expensive off the shelf only averaged at 152 dollars wow this beat that out too yeah by eight dollars and that was like double this price yes that's wild double <laughs> sometimes more than that yeah. like the colorless one was going for like 110 dollars at one point Jeez, it's ridiculous the wilds of eldraine precons we were super super happy with and they are averaged to 112 dollars and 90 cents the doctor who precons which average were about 50 dollars off the shelf are 110 dollars and 17 cents so 160 dollars that's a lot is really really high and i want to make it even clearer because i've been taking this bang for your buck value which is taking the reprint value and dividing it by the you know the pre-order price the the, asking price the asking price where you can get this deck on average of course it varies once things are released these things do change which we are not uh aware of at this point yeah but if you can pick up uh, the the deck at its pre-order price. This gives you the bang for your buck value, which is how much like reprint value you get for every American dollar you spend. Yeah. Uh, so the bang for your buck for All Will Be One was $2.53. March of the Machines was $2.42. Lord of the Rings was $2.53. Commander Masters was incredibly low at $1.90. Oh. Wilds of Eldraine was $2.82. We were excited about that number. Doctor Who was at $2.20 sense the blood rights reprint value bang for your buck value so you take that 160 dollars and you divide it by 40 dollars, which is its current pre-order price is four dollars per of reprints for every one dollar you spend that is crazy it's what that's so high because <laughs> yeah you you had mentioned like it elder uh wilds of eldrain 280 was great was great we this were is super, insane. super happy with that and the fact that like for every one dollar you spend you get four dollars of card value back yeah, that's a good deal is yeah. really exciting especially the fact that these are you know the lowest price we've seen for pre yeah these are the standard 40 dollar price so that's that's insane. That's so much. Yeah, I was really, really happy with the reprint values of these decks to the point where I was like double checking everything. Yeah, <laughs> like that can't be right. That's like that too seems good. really, really high. And um, I'm hoping it stays at forty dollars. I'm hoping that is an accessible number for you guys, or that you picked it up right now when we're talking about it, and that pre-order price is still low. Uh, of course, that number is all very nebulous. Yeah, let's break it down into the thing we really care about which is the notable reprints yeah, in this deck. Yeah, what cards are we getting? What cards are we getting that are worth over $5? So uh, the first one and the most expensive one, a personal favorite of mine, yeah. we have not seen in a very long time. Huge reprint. Exquisite Blood. Which uh, is currently sitting at $35. Yes. And like I, to my understanding, this card hasn't been reprinted since it was printed in Abyssin Restored. I think it was on the list for a period of time. But other than that, we haven't gotten a reprint. They keep reprinting the other half of this. Right, Bond. which is like 80 cents or something yeah, like that. Because they, they've been good about consistently reprinting that. But they specifically haven't been giving us this half of that combo. And yeah. now here it is. And it is back. And I, I am so happy. For those who aren't familiar, it says whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. And it has a nice little vampire going munch, munch, munch on a wrist. Indeed. Yeah. I, it, Exquisite Blood is really, really powerful in any sort of drainy deck or any life gain deck. Of course, if you combine it with uh, Palu, what is it? It's Blood Bond is the combo. So yeah, Sanguine Bond. Sanguine Bond, of course. Yeah. Uh, or they also printed that Vampire Veto. Veto is, same, same is an infinite combo with this. So Exquisite Blood is sort of half of a two card combo that's been very famous in Commander for a long time. Yep. Uh, and to have it reprinted here is a big deal. Yeah. 
Second up is Alenda the Dusk Rose, sitting at $13. One of the pricier vampires, uh, also an option to put in your command zone if you're a big Alenda fan. Yeah, cool seeing her come back from original Exelon. I, yeah, love this reprint. It's nice to have um, some of these really powerful vampires get reprinted to a point where... Um, you can pick them up for a deck that is casual without feeling like you've overspent. Yeah. Uh, the next one is one of my favorite magic cards to play with. And I forgot it was a vampire. Yeah. Bloodgast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bloodgast coming in at $11. Yeah. He's a vampire spirit from uh, Zendikar. Really, really good with Clavileno. It comes down on two. You yep. sacrifice it. You bring it back when you play a land. Uh, you can just keep making demons out of this thing and keep drawing cards and keep drawing cards. and you don't lose anything because as soon as you play oh. your land your next turn he's back or god forbid you have a fetch land then you can bring it back immediately love blood gas he's just often one of the best cards in aristocrats decks because mm. you're just like i just always have something to sacrifice for yeah. basically free I love Bloodgast. Super, super fun in this deck. Uh, the next one is a reprint from what? This is from Val, right? Uh, no, this one was actually originally printed in the Vampire Precon uh, in Commander 2017. Oh, okay. So, so this, this was an in the older, older vampire one. It is New Blood. Yeah. Less new than I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, coming in at $11. Uh, it, it's basically a, a control magic, mm. but specific to vampires because you have to tap a vampire in order to cast it, and then you just steal something permanently. And the important thing with this card uh, compared to other control effects mm. is this also has the text that uh, the you change the text of that creature by replacing all instances of that of one creature type with a vampire so it does a couple things first it also it changes it to a vampire mm -hmm. so that it now has cross synergy with the rest of your deck right. the other thing is if you were to steal like a lord mm -hmm. that gives like soldiers plus one plus one you are now replacing that text with vampire so now it gives vampires plus one plus one that's pretty cool so it it, all instances of one creature type yeah with vampire so there's a ton of synergy where you're playing against other uh like cr creature types uh mm -hmm. strategies and you get to steal some of their best pieces and turn it into a vampire and get to run cards that you normally can't run really sweet yeah uh new blood ton of fun a huge payoff for playing vampires at 11 dollars. another great creature type card it is pact of the serpent one black black for a sorcery choose a creature type it's vampire target player draws x cards and loses x life where x is the number of creatures they control of the chosen type so for you this is a huge draw spell but if you're playing against another creature type focused deck it can be a kill spell <laughs> every now and which again. i have absolutely seen yeah every now and again it just kills somebody which is really funny oh also, also should mention it, it's coming in at 650 six dollars and fifty cents yeah, yeah. So I always love seeing that. Keep reprinting this. Uh, ever since they made this in Kaltheim, it's been like a staple in a ton of my mm. decks. So it's really, really strong, especially in a deck with a little bit of life gain. That life loss doesn't hurt you quite as bad. Exactly. Oh. And then uh, last but not least is Twilight Prophet coming in at $6. Again, another fantastic card from uh, Rivals of Ixalan. Mm. Uh, this one is a 2-4 flyer with Ascend. And then on your upkeep, if you have the City's Blessing, you reveal the top card of your library, you put it into your hand, and each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life where X is the mana value it's inverse bob yes it, it's bob that also kills your opponents it's it's trebor i was trying to do robert backwards Robert. Ba <laughs> <laughs> sure it's trebor yeah uh twilight prophet is an awesome vampire it just got it caught a reprint um and it is still at six dollars that is how you know it is a sweet card uh, those are the most expensive cards in this deck. We're also going to talk about the best cards mechanically, the ones that when you draw them, you're like, oh my gosh, it is all happening. The game has begun. <laughs> uh, so just the, the cards that you're most excited to see in your hand, starting with a new card that is cracked i think this card's great yeah i when i was looking through this deck and we were i was working mm. on this upgrade guide and i saw this card i'm like wait does this do what i think it does and the answer was yes every mm. single time so we have an, this new card charismatic conqueror one and a white for a two two v creature vampire soldier with vigilance whenever an artifact or creature enters the battlefield untapped and under an opponent's control they may tap that permanent why would they do that? Because if they don't, you create a 1-1 white vampire creature token with lifelink. 
Anytime they play a mana rock, yep. they either give you a token or it comes in tapped. Yep. Anytime they make a treasure token, they give you a token or it comes in tapped. This slows your opponents down by a full turn or speeds you up leagues. Yeah, or anytime they play a creature or a creature token comes in the battlefield, their creatures either come in tapped so you get another, you get a free attack yeah. because they don't have that blocker up or they decided to leave it up. It was so important that they had that creature untapped or they had it as a blocker. Well, you got another vampire. Yeah, I was looking at this and I was like, I think this gets looked at for like Winota CDH. Like this slows down. It's so good. This slows down Dockside combos that yep. like it otherwise... I mean, I guess they could win on the spot, I suppose, if they have a dockside. Maybe that, you know, that sometimes happens. Yep. But it's, yep. uh, it also triggers per treasure, right? Yep. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield. Yeah, it triggers per artifact or creature that enters the battlefield. Um, this is going to flood your board with vampires, especially if your opponents are greedy. Or it just says that soul ring, you can wait. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a vampire specific blind obedience. Sure. Where blind obedience is like your creatures and artifacts are going to enter tapped. This says you can have them enter untapped, but I'm going to get something for it. Yeah. And it is a relevant body because it is, is it, it makes a vampire that has lifelink mm -hmm. like that is so good and and with the dockside example you know they make 15 treasures you they now have to ask themselves do i get this mana now yeah. or do i give you 15 vampires and if you have any lords out or any other cross synergy which you're going to have in a vampire deck that those are relevant bodies yeah it's a. Uh, I think this card's super sweet. It's two mana, so it comes down under your three mana commander. It's a bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> with vigilance. It, it's really sweet. Um, uh, into Chariz charismatic conqueror. I think we're going to see a lot of it in commander. Uh, we'll see what its price settles at, but I think it's one of the like clearly we think it's one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, up next is a reprint. We mentioned her already. It's a Lend of the Dusk Rose. It's whenever stuff dies, she gets bigger. And then when she dies, she makes that many things. Yeah, she just great doubles. Great board wipe protection. Yep. Great to sacrifice. Yep. Um, in aristocrat decks, it usually means that you can like double your dies triggers because yep. you can sacrifice a Lenda, make that many tokens, and then just keep sacking. If you can bring a Lenda back, now you're really cooking. Yeah, and it's cool that she has lifelink. And so as she gets bigger, that matters more. And then mm -hmm. she replaces herself with lifelink. Uh, vampires yep Alenda's great especially in i mean in a vampire sack strategy she couldn't be happier yep exactly speaking of didn't know they were a vampire yeah yeah henny and he's <laughs> a aetherborn vampire uh so this is just a free sack outlet that gives itself indestructible yeah i yeah henny is the kind of card that whenever they are in my hand i am like this card's insane. This mm -hmm. card is busted. Yep. And then whenever I'm building decks, I'm like, uh, Yehenny's kind of on the block. And you're like, don't. No, run it. They're great. Yes. Yehenny, again, it's a vampire, so it synergizes with mm -hmm. your deck. But the fact that they give you a free sack outlet when you don't mm -hmm. have to pay for, it protects itself. Yep. And that when you, your opponent's board wipe, uh, they survive and they get bigger. Mm -hmm. So then you're just like, oh, well, you can board wipe. And then I'm left with like a 10-10. Yeah. And I can just swing at you with it. Yeah. Yenny's great. I they're aggressive. They're a vampire. They're a sack outlet for all your dice triggers. It's everything this deck wants to do. All right. All things considered, we've talked about what the deck has, what what is in it off the shelf. What did you want to do with these upgrades? So I had a couple goals in mind. Mm. First thing was I wanted a few more sack outlets. Uh, mm -hmm. I felt like they didn't have quite enough in the deck yet uh, to really consistently get Clavileño's ability. And sure, you know, you're like, oh, well, my creatures will die in combat after I've done it. Well, if it's really bad for your opponents, they just will let it through or... If it's not bad for opponents, then they'll just block and then you get the thing. And that's that's great and all, but having control over it is way better. Being able to go in and then just be like, listen, you can either take the damage and I hit you, or you can block and I get the thing. Or if you don't do it and you take the damage, I'm just going to sack it anyways and, and replace it. So being able to more reliably get that ability is really important. And with this being Aristocrats deck, there's a ton of the classics like Blood Artists and stuff like that that you just want the sack outlets in order to keep the deck going. Yeah. So that was priority number one. Uh, number two, uh, we I had mentioned it, but you definitely need more removal. Uh, in this deck, uh, it didn't have quite enough, particularly because you just need to remove some of those early threats to be able to keep getting your vampires in. Mm -hmm. um, so that was something else I shored up. And then last but not least was just uh, some more early vampires. That way you're consistently hitting a vampire on one and or on two. That way you slam Clavileño on three and you immediately get a trigger. Yeah. So that Makes was my, sense. yeah, those were my priorities. 
Uh, that being said, these decks play really, really well they out do. of the box. Um, we'll talk about it once we get into the cuts. Uh, so these are great options to shore up when you have the box in your hand or just play it out of the box and see how it goes. Yeah, that was actually, that's an important point. Uh, myself and everybody else that worked on these decks, mm. I felt like had more struggle with upgrading the decks on the cuts than normal. Right. Normally it's like, oh, okay, there's, there's a, a decent amount of throwaways and then you just remove those immediately. You cut a couple extra cards and then you're done. Mm-hmm. This one was like, this deck is actually very well constructed. They're pretty tight. Yeah. And, and we, it got to the point where I'm like, I am cutting a real card just to shore up some additional weakness that this deck has, but it is actually something you have to think about and you have to like, you know, you could make a different choice and it would be perfectly reasonable. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the better constructed decks that I've seen probably all year. Yeah, a very exciting round of pre-cons here in Lost Caverns of Ixalan. We are going to get into the actual upgrade. We're going to pick 10 cards to add. We're going to take 10 cards out in just a few minutes after our sponsors. Yeah, yeah, it's me, Cranko. You magic players are always going, Oh, Cranko, make me a bunch of goblins. Well, that's easy for you to say, but guess what? Those goblin tokens don't come out of nowhere. I used to spend hours looking through job websites to hire new gobbos, but not no more. Now I've got Indeed, where you can attract, interview, and hire in the same place. Their powerful tools let me find new recruits faster than your opponents can say, okay, I scoop. Indeed's hiring platform does the hard work for you. Imagine you with quality candidates instantaneously. That means quick, numbskulls. Plus, with Indeed, I ain't gotta pay for resumes unless they're up to snuff. And I got high requirements, like uh, being a goblin. So go ahead and tap me again, you goon. I got employees for days, thanks to Indeed. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash command zone. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash command zone. Just go to Indeed.com slash command zone and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash command zone. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right, my new deck list is complete. Now, let's see which cards I don't already own and buy them. Wait. How'd you do that without going through a million boxes? Oh, I just use Architect. They make it super easy to upload and manage your collection. Then when you're done brewing a deck, you can sort it by collection status to see what you already have. So this group is just cards you don't own? Yep, I just click buy this stack and it takes me right to Card Kingdom. Whoa. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. Thanks for sticking with us. It is time to upgrade this deck. We use a 50 card budget we're adding 10 cards to the deck we're taking 10 cards out again this is just shoring up some of the weaknesses that we've talked about in the deck making sure it plays as well as possible when you take it to your next game night and we've got some cool cards to add to this deck yeah the first one is one of my favorite cards that i've never owned really i don't know i should just buy it you but should it feel it's so good to be fair it hasn't been reprinted in a bit it so. has it's pretty spendy so a lot of the budget's going right away but yep. So uh, our first include is Phyrexian Tower coming in at 20 bucks. Uh, it's a land, a legendary land. It taps for colorless and you can tap sack a creature, add black, black. Huge. I mean, you you want a sack outlet. This gives you something to do, like to cast your instance and to sacrifice your creatures. And it's free. It's yep. on a land. Uh, I love Phyrexian Tower. I like High Market's one of my favorite lands just to throw into a deck. Yeah, me too. Uh, because having a sack outlet when it counts is so important. Yeah, and this one ramps you. Yeah. For basically free like mm-hmm. it, it, a lot of times you're just like well i want needed to sack this thing anyways i might as well just go up a mana yeah so fantastic love this card love for Xene tower worth the 20 bucks oh also not not telling you you have to do this but i'm just saying they the dracula secret lair mm-hmm. had phyrexia tower in it so if you really want to go really deep on the vampire thing i mean you have to there is right? an option for you that's pretty yeah. cool all right all right, I'll get a Phyrexian Tower and build vampires. I've yeah. never done that. <laughs> well, I have several vampire decks. <laughs> I really like vampires. Uh, All right, let's talk about this next one. It's not a vampire, but it is a good include in this deck. No, this is my one honorary vampire. Mm. Um, so this one is Braids Risen Nightmare coming in at 450. Mm-hmm. Uh, Braids is one black black for a 3 3 legendary creature nightmare. <laughs> when vampires are nightmares, so, yeah. you know, it, it fits. And you could always use, <laughs> use your own new blood to change Braids into a vampire. Have fun. See? <laughs> uh, and then it says, at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact, a creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and you draw a card. 
this card is just so good that it's like, I don't care that it's not a vampire. It is just one of the best sacrifice outlet sacrifice mm. cards that we've gotten in quite a long time. A 3-3 three, three on rate 3 drop that then immediately usually will draw you 3 cards. Yeah. And can, can keep doing that every turn. And if not, you're you're costing something for your opponent. So sometimes it's like, oh, well, I'll draw 2 cards, you sack something. Or mm. I, I draw a card, you, sa- you 2 sack something. Mm. And it happens immediately because it just happens on the end step. So fantastic include and I, I love this card so much this card's also great in carmen carmen <laughs> uh <laughs> i mean braids just does so much work especially if you're in like there's so many play groups that they're like i can't afford to sack a creature you i just have to give you a card or yep. i lose a huge tempo yeah if they uh, just like just have their commander out right you're just like well you're getting a card and i'm losing life because i'm no way i'm sacking my commander right now very very powerful include for sure uh, next card is another sack outlet. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorite sack outlets, Spawning Pit. It's uh, two mana for an artifact. You sack a creature, put a charge counter on it. So free sack outlet, very important. And then you can pay one, remove two charge counters on it, and you create a 2-2 colorless spawn artifact creature token, and you put it on the battlefield. So it's a free sack outlet that comes mm-hmm. in at two very early. And then later on, you can just start paying one and make fodder that then you can sacrifice to it or to other things yeah spawning pit's one of my favorite sack well it's my favorite sack outlet in aristocrat builds yeah um because it continues to fuel that engine for every two things you sacrifice you get a creature back yep. uh so it lets you really churn through your creatures and make sure that you're you get to drain for as long as possible also wizards please give us the spawn token you still haven't we're still waiting on it It'll be in a precon someday. They've got to put Spawning Pit in there. I would. It's I, too cool. It's very good. I, I mean, they reprinted it in Jumpstart, but Jumpstart had no tokens, so yeah. we didn't get it, and it, it was sad. Spawning Pit, of course, is only two dollars and fifty cents. Real cheap, real powerful. Get it in there. All right. The next section we're talking about is interaction. Uh, like we said, that number is a little bit low, so let's just put in some classic spells to make sure that you can always clear a path for your vampires. Um, first one is a simple one, uh, Path to Exile, coming mm-hmm. in $1.50. Uh, it's just one of the best removal spells in white. This deck already has its counterpart swords, mm-hmm. uh, so I just wanted this one to sort of finish it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, basically any white deck, I'm going to be running both of those. Right. And... Uh, since this deck needed more removals, like, okay, well, I'm, I'm putting in path. Classic. So this next one is a reason to play Orzov. It's anguished unmaking one white black for an instant exile target, non-land permanent. You lose three life. Yep. It just handles something that needs to be handled at instant speed for the measly cost of three life. Your deck has a ton of life gain and that is not an issue. Yep. And that's coming in at, at 550 right now yep. and has Soren on it. it. So you got the little it's vampire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This next category is just a little vampires. Yeah. It's, just a little one. It's just a little one. Just the, you know, the ones that were left behind a little bit. We just needed to make sure that they got in there. And don't forget about your, your little vampires. <laughs> Uh, so this first one, uh, Vampire of the Dire Moon. It's a one mana, one, one vampire with death touch and lifelink. And that's it. And it's coming in at three bucks. Uh, it is so efficient having a little one one with death touch that your opponents don't want to block and then so annoying. you play it on one you play clavileno on three you attack with it and now you're like okay well if you trade with this because you have to trade because it yeah. has death touch i also get a card yeah well, <laughs> so, and a four three and a four so three you're like all right well this is unblockable now great thank you yeah and the second you start getting your anthems down or your vampire payoffs it really it really pops off yeah uh, this next one is another one mana vampire. It is Knight of the Ebon Legion. This is for a single black. It is a one two vampire knight with an activated ability that says two and a black Knight of the Ebon Legion gets plus three plus three and gains death touch until end of turn. At the beginning of your end step, if a player lost four or more life this turn, put a counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion. A plus one plus one counter yep. specifically and he's coming in at two dollars. Uh, a couple things with him. First, threat of activation is huge on this guy. Awesome. Where it's like I am pumping him. Uh, he's becoming a four five. He pro- he probably survives that contact that combat, and he got death touch, so he killed your creature. So t- huge threat of activation. Mm. And then on top of that, Clavileno makes four threes. So if you get in with any of those flyers, he gets pumped. Mm-hmm. So it's great early. It's great late, and uh, just a just an awesome include. Yeah, I played with this thing in limited, and it was a house. Yeah, when it came down on one, you were like, I, yeah, what do I do? <laughs> This thing's huge, and it's only getting bigger. I like that Knight of the Ebon Legion a lot in this deck. Again, 
Vampires that come in under your commander mean that the moment he hits the battlefield, you get to attack. So powerful. Yep. Right Another uh, sneaky vampire, one that most yeah. people don't realize is a vampire. Doesn't look like a vampire, uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, Vran Executioner Thane coming in at 125. It is a one in a black for a 2-2 legendary creature, Phyrexian Vampire. And then whenever one or more other creatures you control die, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life and it triggers only once each turn. So you're not getting that more than once, but you're getting a very big drain at one time. You mm-hmm. basically get two blood artist triggers for the price of one. Right. And then it only triggers once each turn, but that's, you could get four on a rotation as long as you have instant speed sack outlets. Yeah. It seems like Bran is going to work on your turn because if something gets blocked, any creature gets blocked and you're attacking. And then it will often work on the turn before yours when you're sacking stuff to make those four threes. Yep. Um, and dr- doing a four life swing is huge. Yep. Um, and it's each opponent, right? Yep, yeah. Each opponent. Oh my god! It it's comes better out. than two blood artists. It's two Zulaport cutthroats. It's, it's yeah. I guess that's more accurate. Two Zulaport yeah. cutthroats. Yeah. Because it's hitting everybody. Right. Um, and then it comes in on two, and you just get to attack with it on turn three. Mm-hmm. So like, and then you're like, okay, well, kill it, and I get a card, and <laughs> and I get a four three. Yeah. So Bran is sick in this deck, and so cheap. The dollar twenty five cents makes him a slam dunk. Yep. Uh, next card we're looking at is another two drop no priest of oblivion coming in at only a dollar uh, it's one in a black for two one creature vampire cleric it has kicker for a three in a black it has uh, menace and lifelink and when it enters the battlefield if it was kicked you return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield very good because you could play it early if you mm. need it you can play it on two and just be like okay i'm just gonna keep hitting you with this uh, evasive lifelinker mm-hmm. and then you get the clavileno trigger and all that stuff mm-hmm. and then if you get it late it just reanimates something this yeah. this has just been included in a ton of decks recently for me um, because again it's good at both both uh, early and late and yeah. it's just awesome that it's a vampire. The flexibility makes it it feel really good in your hand because you're like I don't want, like I could slam it early and then get my deck really moving but just having that option to hold it after a board wipe is so feels so good on yep. something that you can just cast for two alternatively yeah uh it feels like a modal spell it's because it is Kick, <laughs> kicker baby and everything's the, kicker every, everything is kicker all right we've got one more vampire to add to this yeah uh this one is a uh, forerunner of legion two and a white for two two vampire knight when it enters the battlefield you get to search your library for a vampire card reveal it shuffle your library put it on top and then whenever another vampire enters the battlefield under control target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn so uh a couple things first off it's a tutor Mm-hmm. a vampire tutor so you can go get whatever your best vampire is yeah, at a given for like situation. 50 cents that's yeah a tutor coming in at 50 cents yeah remember there's like 36 vampires in this deck so you'll have a vampire for the job yeah and it, and as we sort of mentioned earlier there's a ton of vampires that also get to act as spells mm-hmm. so you get to tutor out like a removal spell or an anthem or a recursion or, or a blood artist or mm-hmm. something like that so there's always something relevant to the situation and then it has the little tiny upside of whenever you another vampire you control enters you get to pump something so so you might be able to force a damage through when you normally couldn't have and that makes it even more difficult uh, for your opponents when you get the Clavileno trigger where you're like well now this creature will trade with my opponent and if they kill it I get something from mm-hmm. it and personally uh, I'm have started come coming to the point where I'm not a huge fan of just blanket like uh, blanket tutors that mm-hmm. can just get anything yeah but i love specific tutors where it's like this works in the synergy of my deck right but it's not just like a demonic tutor right it's um what i like about forerunner too is because they they really controlled the power level of the forerunner cycle mm-hmm. by putting the card on top of the yeah. library but because you have card draw in your command zone and you have sack outlets and ways to trigger this the vampire dies thing you can Get it right away and yeah. you can cast it if you if that's the case, if you need it. Or if you show somebody a scary vampire, like a blood artist, which is is the problem with specific tutors, is you're like, there's my trick. Yeah. Um you they don't get a chance to like mill you or you you can get it off the top of your library yeah. uh if you need it right away. So a forerunner is really sweet. It's on a vampire again. Having this cross synergy is so important to making your deck run as powerfully as possible. 
All right, those are our 10 ads. They are totaling $41.75. Pretty yeah. good. Uh, and if you want to keep your budget a little bit tighter, you can not pick up Phyrexian Tower. Go get a high market instead. And then you're all the way back down to like 20 bucks. Yeah, it's super a great, easy. great upgrade, lowering the curve to make sure that uh, your commander is working as soon as he hits the battlefield. Uh, and you have that removal to get stuff out of the way. Uh, of course, we've added 10 cards. So we've got to do it. We've got to take 10 cards out. Otherwise, it's not illegal. You can't play it. Your friends will be mad. So we're going to take <laughs> 10 cards out of this Blood Rites pre-con, uh, starting with some expensive vampires. Yeah. So the first one that we're cutting is uh, Blood Tracker. Uh, it's a four mana 2-2. Two, two. Uh, it has flying. You pay a black, pay two life, put a counter on it. When it leaves the battlefield, you draw a card for each counter on it. It's fine, but I've felt it's way too slow. I blood tracker is better in a plus one counter deck. If mm. you have a ways to put a bunch of counters on blood tracker and you like in a counter sack outlet type of deck, yeah. then it's really, really strong. But just as a vampire that you're relying on its ability to put counters on it. Most of the time it isn't synergistic enough. Yeah. It's not going to get there. I think yeah. most of the time. And for my vampire decks, I've cut it from basically all of them mm -hmm. because again, if you're not doing the counter thing, it's just, it, it doesn't do enough. Yep. This next one is so sad because it's the card that I look at and I'm like, this card has to be sweet. And it's just too slow. It's Timothar, Baron of Bats. Four black black for a 4-4 four, four vampire noble. He has ward, discard a card. Whenever another non-token vampire you control dies, you may pay one and exile it. If you do put a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token uh, with flying... Yep. create yeah it gains when this creature deals combat damage to a player sacrifice it and return the exiled card to the battlefield tapped so first of all this messes with clavileno right whenever another non-token you control dies you may pay one and exile it does it get oh it still does it still dies it, it still dies, dies first and then you exile it from the graveyard yep. okay good that's good to know um but it it like Okay, you have to pay the one, you have to make a bat. Then the bat has to survive and hit, otherwise the vampire's just gone. Yeah, it's just an exile. And a lot of, most of the time you'd rather it just be in your graveyard. You can recur right. it in other ways. Mm. It just ends up being too slow. I think if it didn't have the pay one clause, I could see it. Hey, you've but the fact that six. It, you've paid six for it and then it taxes you, yeah. it just makes it so this card is generally not worth it. Also, if it really becomes a problem for your opponents, they will just discard the card. Right. Uh, sure they two for one themselves that's great and all but i much rather have a ward that makes it close to impossible for mm -hmm. your opponent to pay for it a, a, a mana cost is mm -hmm. usually that uh over just like all right it's just going to cost you an additional card yeah timothar doesn't quite get there for me i wish it was a, yeah again it, you paid six mana for this creature if you have to pay a seventh to make it actually do something yeah. uh it it just feels so expensive in especially in an aggressive deck uh, next card we have is uh, Voner, Vona, Butcher of Magan. Uh, she's a 5 mana 4-4 four, four, Vigilance Lifelink. You, pay, you tap her, pay 7 life. You destroy an online permanent, but importantly, activate only on your turn. Yeah, Vona's weird because you can attack with her and then if she survives combat, you can activate it after, but you have to do it on your turn. And paying 7 life at sorcery speed can be rough. Yeah. Because uh, you do not know how that turn is going to go necessarily. It, it's it's tough because like... Removal with sorcery speed doesn't feel great. No. And you have to untap with her. Yeah. Because it's a tap ability. Yeah. If you could do it immediately, then we're talking. But the fact that you have to pay 5 mana to just go pass. Mm. And then you get back to your turn and you're like, great, now I can do it. But again, I only get it on my turn. I can't answer that threat that you decided to attack me with mm -hmm. or anything like that so it just it's not quite there yep sorcery speed removal doesn't feel great uh this next one is a seven drop it is five black black for a vampire warrior five four with flying it is butcher of malakir yep. whenever butcher or another creature you control dies each opponent sacrifices a creature this is very very expensive grave pact um I've gone, on, I've gone on record saying Grave Pact effects are not super fun. Yes, they are extremely powerful, but they grind the game to a halt. I would rather this slot be taken up by something that wins the game rather than stopping the game, especially when it comes on a seven drop. Yeah, that is exactly my problem with the card as well. I used to run it in uh, my Edgar deck and my Strafon deck, yeah. and it's great. It is very powerful, especially when you have sack outlets. 
but you're not winning the game. You're just slowing it down mm. because it costs you something. And sure, like, yeah, I get to lock out p- players from the game. Great. But you're not actually like, you're just, just going to play for a few more hours. Just I'd rather have, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like, I'd rather have a threat that's like, no, this game's going to come to a close. Yeah. Then just be like, we're going to keep playing for a few more hours. Yeah. I uh, I agree. I don't think great pack f- effects are super fun, especially when they're overcosted and on a creature. Like if you're going to play great pack, play great pack, and I will choose to play with someone else. Yeah. Uh, this next spell is a removal spell, but an expensive one. It is return to dust. Yeah. Uh, four mana instant exile target artifact or enchantment. If you cast it during your main phase, you get to exile an additional artifact or enchantment. Uh, four mana for sorcery speed is too too much and four mana at instant speed for one thing is too much yeah i don't play return to dust anymore um we just have better removal in white that is more flexible than this like anguish i'm making like anguish i'm making yeah play that instead yeah uh next one we have is heirloom blade three mana for an equipment um you equip one equip creature gets plus three plus one and whenever it dies you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it you put it into your hand and the rest on the bottom uh i've just felt it's just too slow Mm. for for my personal taste uh i don't want to be running out a three drop and then have to equip and then have that creature die and i don't even get to the play i just draw a card basically Mm -hmm. a lot of times you're just going to get better just sacrificing it especially with clavelenio and stuff like that like yeah I actually don't mind Heirloom Blade. I think it's a little underplayed uh, because the equip cost is just one. It's, it's, you know, it's half a skull clamp and you draw a spell. Uh, it doesn't have a, give you a way to kill it, but I agree in a deck like this where its curve is so low and you're just trying to go, 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 go. It feels a little bit grindier. Like I think Heirloom Blade could be, be run in decks that aren't centered around a creature type. If As long as you're sacrificing, you know, a human or a warrior or something like that. <laughs> or do a, do like a polymorph thing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like it just draws you a card when a creature dies and gives it a huge buff. A plus three plus one is super powerful, but I think in this deck, your, most of your stuff has death touch. Most of your stuff is like already a threat enough that heirloom blade isn't necessary. Um, so I think this card's neat, but yeah. um, maybe not in the right spot here. Yeah. I'd be really curious to see uh, you run it. Cause I personally have felt it's too slow in most of my decks. Sure. But I'm wondering if, maybe some of the decks that you're putting it in mm. are is tailored in a different way. And I'm actually sort of excited and interested in seeing what you do with it. Most of the time, if I'm playing equipment, it's because it's an equipment deck. Right. Uh, otherwise they feel a little over costed. Mm-hmm. Um, so that synergy is more what I care about that rather than the creature type synergy. So you're doing like an equipment deck that has a generic uh, yeah. commander or like, a generic, a lot of generic creatures. And you're yeah. just like, listen, if you kill this thing, I replace it with something. I draw something else. Yeah. And that's, And in an aggressive deck, just making sure that you are replacing it with like another angel. Yeah. If like, if you kill this threat, I will have another threat. Yeah. Is uh, meaningful. Uh, But yeah, I don't think it's like an aristocrat card. Yeah. That's really cool. I I, I really haven't considered it in a equipment deck. It's not an equipment that I look at. Because yeah. it, it lends itself to a creature type specific strategy, right? And but so, a lot of time I, there's just incidental value there, right? Yeah, that's like, really that's really like, interesting. I have if everything that cares about equipment is like warriors, or there's yeah. like four or five cards that are warriors, yeah. you know. So I, I think Airblade, Air, Heirloom Blade is a little underrated, but here cool. I agree in a weird spot. Speaking of, the next one is an equipment. (laughs) Blade of the Blood Sheaf. Uh, A single mana to cast, one mana to equip. Whenever a creature dies, put a plus one counter on the equipped creature. If the equipped creature is a vampire, put two counters on it instead. I do not like equipment that doesn't do anything until something else happens. Yeah. uh, The... Which I guess, it like, at least Heirloom Blade gives it plus three plus one right now. Yeah, it gives it, it gives it a pump. This yeah. one just says, you got to do something else. It is anything dies, so it counts you, Yeah, which is cool. And it has the, you know, the cross synergy with vampires. The issue that I always run into with this card is vampires tend to be a go wide strategy. Mm-hmm. And this is making something tall. Yeah. I, I, I could see someday maybe they give us a vampire that lends itself to that strategy. Uh, but for this one, it doesn't really make sense to me. Sure. I could maybe see it in Carmen. That That's an interesting idea, but... She gets real big. Yeah. She gets very big very quickly. Mm-hmm. But in general, I've just noticed, like, 
I, I don't run in my vampire decks. Yep, I think that is fair. The next one is a four mana enchantment. It's Kindred Boon. Yeah, speaking of cards, I don't run in my vampire decks. Yeah, two white white for an enchantment. <laughs> when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. It has an activated ability that says one and a white. Put a divinity counter on target creature you control of the chosen type. Each creature you control with a divinity counter on it has indestructible. A really weird deck. A weird card for a deck that wants things to die yeah uh I, I, shout out to the new art by the way yeah the, this card was originally in there's uh, new art for uh, return to dust too which is uh, cool yeah uh this card was originally in commander 2017 as well in the edgar deck and mm. i had the same feeling I'm like what what is this doing in I here i want stuff to die yeah like we're we're cool with them dying you know that right i think and kindred then, boon is cool if you're playing angels if you're playing dragons if you're playing big demon like problems yeah but like nobody's gonna spend targeted removal on one vampire that's yeah. not the problem there's the also problem is a hundred vampires exactly that is exactly <laughs> it and then let's say you get to that board state where you're like i've spent so much mana because it's two per activation yeah to make like my whole board indestructible you you go to attack and you're like oh i'm so safe your opponent removes the enchantment now everything lost indestructible and you're just like oh that sucks yeah kindred so. boon i think has cool spots but i i agree this is a go wide strategy this is a dies deck it doesn't need to be here exactly uh next card is the hardest card that uh for me to cut because it is one of my absolute favorite cards we talked about it earlier mm -hmm. it is the most expensive card in this deck it is exquisite blood yeah i love this card there are two problems with this card. Problem number one. As soon as you play it, everybody assumes you're running Sanguine Bond or Veto because mm -hmm. Veto makes sense. You're playing a vampire deck. Right. They're going to go after you. They're going to kill you or kill this. Mm -hmm. So it generates a ton of hate. And then let's say you're politically savvy and you're like, you know what? I'm not running the other ones. Mm -hmm. I pinky promise. And yeah. you're and the everybody believes you. Yeah. They're still probably going to go after you because now if they hit each other, you gain life. Yes. So it just generates so much hate that aggro decks don't want <laughs> yeah. that... It makes it really hard to run that run this card in a deck like this. There are decks that can run it, mm. uh, but they tend to be a little... They sit back a little bit more and protect themselves and then do like little pings and stuff like that. But uh, if you're not running the combo in an aggressive deck, I just, I wouldn't run it. And I personally would not run the combo in yeah. a deck like this. It, it says, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill <laughs> it me. It absolutely and does. Because if you kill each other... Uh, this person becomes a bigger problem. Yeah. yeah it, it absolutely says, look at me right now. Exactly. And that's not something this deck's trying to do. Right. Um, also, a little fun fact for you guys. Exquisite is my favorite word. Oh. Yeah. Is it because it has X and then a Q? No. I, that's a cool... A the, cool yeah. No, I just I just really like the word. It just <laughs> sounds really nice to me. It's not some, one you hear very often. Yeah. That's, exquisite. Yeah. Do you have a favorite word? Not really. No? I don't know. There's a lot of them. There is a lot of them. <laughs> But everybody should have a favorite word. Yeah, it's hard to pick a favorite movie, and there's, like, way fewer movies. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. But, yeah, I love this card. Is that true? There's got to be fewer fewer movies than words, No, right? there's there's surely more words, because, I mean, every right? movie has words in it, right? Like yeah, the title? Yeah, but, like, th it's got to be. Yeah, there's, there's way more words. <laughs> there's a lot of words. I mean, people are making up words left All and right anytime you want. Yeah, there's yeah. a new word every day. Yeah. There's also a new movie every day. Oh. We're getting really philosophical yeah, on this I one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's one more cut, and it's your favorite thing to cut. What oh, I it? love cutting this card. Uh, Temple of the False God. Yeah. Stop. Every If I see it, I'm going to cut it, unless it's like, I this don't know. This is an you're aggro deck. Yeah. This is an aggro deck. <laughs> Stop it. This is a deck that's trying to cast low curve things, and if, if the land in your deck doesn't work when your deck is trying to work, don't put it in the deck. Yep. I think there are places for Temple of the False God. <laughs> It's in decks that can put a lot of lands into play or that are trying to cast big things. You're not in no. this deck at all. Uh, also, they they, just, they put it in every single one of these decks and they combine them with bounce lands. Yeah. That You're like, what are you doing? That doesn't make sense. Bounce lands gives me fewer lands. Like, I, they're, if you're putting this card in the, in the deck, great. But you need to count it as a ramp piece and you need to make sure that it is doing what your deck wants to do. Yeah. Otherwise, it's getting in the way. <laughs> Yeah, ex exactly. And uh, colorless is a cost. Yeah. So not even like, even when you get the ramp, like there's a lot of times where you're like, man, I really need a lot of black mana right now. Or I need a lot of white mana. And it, Vampires it, are, have such high devotion too. So yeah. many of them are black, black one or yeah. black, or like black, black for yeah, the two the, drops. It's turns, just... Turns out the uh, religious uh, vampires are very yeah. devoted. Yeah. Yeah. They care about it a lot. So yeah, I, again, I, I can't, I'm going to keep seeing this card. I'm going to keep cutting it. It doesn't make sense in this deck and stop it. It's not a bad card. Just know what it does. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've added 10 cards. We're taking 10. We've taken 10 cards out. We have 100 perfect cards. Yeah, not 110. We didn't cheat. No. No. 
Now what? When you when you take this deck to your next next uh, game night, how yeah. do you expect your game plan to pan out? So, it's a, it's a this is a highly aggressive deck. Mm. Uh, you're really trying to hit that one and two drop before you drop Clavileno because there's nothing worse than you not having an early drop and then you're like, well, if I play my commander it doesn't do anything right now. And then I have to untap with it and I have to attack with him. That doesn't feel good. And especially on a two, two, like mm -hmm. he doesn't have evasion himself or anything. And sure you can use his trigger on himself, but then you just lost your commander, like yeah, three for, mana for, for one, a four, card three. and a four, three, not, not right. worth it. Yeah. So you really, really need that early drop. Yeah. So you're playing aggressive. Um, and the nice thing about uh, Clavileno compared to most of aggressive decks is he gives you the gas for the late game that yeah. uh, aggro deck struggle with. Yeah. Yeah. He gives you, a relevant attacker mm -hmm. and he gives you a card so keep that in mind uh you're you really want to uh you leverage your early attacks and don't be afraid to lose your creatures don't be afraid to be like i'm going to attack you you're either going to take some damage right now or i'm going to trade with your thing and replace it mm -hmm. you're perfectly fine with that um and then you, you really just want to get his trigger off as many times as you can. Use your sack outlets to turn into card draw and into flyers. Like turning a ground attacker into a 4-3 flyer feels really good in the mm. late game. And on top of that, uh, he gives you built-in board wipe protection. Because as you keep spreading that out and that keeps going to your board, mm -hmm. uh, when they do inevitably do that board wipe, you're like, great, I'm going to draw five. And I'm going to make five four threes. And now you have to deal with this. Yeah, this deck is just about steady pressure yeah. from turn one. You yeah. want a one drop or a two drop. You want to be hitting people right away. And then once they're set up for it to be hit and they're like, all right, you can't hit me anymore. Now you're sacrificing your stuff. You're getting dice triggers. You're yep. getting bigger creatures that, oh, no, we can't block those now. You're in phase two of your plan while your opponents are still setting up. Right. It is about pressure so you don't want your hand gummed up with huge expensive things and you don't want to uh feel inflexible at any point go 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 may know that your stuff is going to replace itself and keep pressuring your opponents if you know that they're going to have life gain or if you know that they're going to be difficult to attack at some point hit them first yeah especially because we we got all these food decks like start attacking them because they had just have free life gain built yeah. into their deck. And so just keep, be as aggressive as you can. Go as wide as you can. Don't be afraid to overcommit because he will help you with that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, start turning those 1-1 one -one lifelinkers into 4-3 flyers in the late game. So, yeah. yeah. Pretty sweet deck. Uh, it feels... It reminds me a little bit of... Uh, of Oh, no. What's his name? Edric? Uh, nope. Not Edric. Who's the guy? Edgar. That's it. Edgar the Vampire? Edgar or Edric Sp Sp the Ed Edgar Spy was Master. what I was looking for. Okay. It, it, because it's cheap vampires yep. that are pressuring your life total immediately. Yep. And it gives you like a ton of bodies that are just really difficult to, to deal with. So it does remind me of Edgar in those ways. And I think it works very well without red. Yeah. Like it get, you have that aristocrat backup plan and you have all of that aggressive pressure. It gives you a lot of ways to reduce their life total to zero. Yeah. Basically the, the main difference I feel between this and Edgar mm. is Edgar is like, I'm going to be extremely aggressive. That's right. what red gives you yeah. just a absolute extreme aggression. Yeah. As many one drops as you can. This one says, I'm going to trade off a little bit of aggression for a better late game. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Edgar does. Protection. Yeah. And that's something that Edgar doesn't give you. So it's really cool being able to go a little bit of a different direction. This one cares more about the sack outlets than Edgar does. And like I said, you get, you have, you trade off a slightly weaker early game for a much better late game. Yeah. Uh, it's neat. I like to see that they are trying to pressure Edgar's spot as the de facto vampire yeah. commander uh, and giving some really powerful synergistic options. So yeah. Clavileño is super sweet. Uh, to the listeners, what do you think of, of Clavileño and this pre-con? Any cards that we missed that we absolutely should have added to this deck, in your opinion? Any cards we suggested to take out or add that you disagree with? Are you a huge... Uh, kindred boon stan let us know <laughs> uh, we we talked a little bit about edict effects like butcher of malakir do you think that's essential to this deck's plan let us know in the comments we do read those we like talking to you about that stuff so come say hi we appreciate it so much and let me know your favorite word if you have one yeah think about it let me know your favorite word i'll be in there seeing seeing what spicy words y'all pick
Yeah, that's a good one. I, I talked to a guy once who said his he the word he hated the most mm-hmm. was pamphlet. 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 And I was like, you know what? It's a great option. I think I hate pamphlet too. Yeah, you know. Because your word, pamphlet. It, it's very like nasally. Yeah, pamphlet. and you have to turn from M to F to L, yeah. which is meh. Yeah. Like, like, you know what? And, and on top of that, I hate when people hand me pamphlets. Yeah. You're like, get that out of my face. <laughs> pamphlet. We talked about a lot of magic cards today. We talked about a very sweet deck. If you want to pick up all of those, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash command. When you shop there, which we know you're going to do, you're magic players, you love magic cards, you can do so while supporting the show without spending any extra money. Just bookmark that affiliate link, and then when you're shopping, you're automatically helping us. Plus, it's a great place to shop because they're super professional have a huge selection of magic cards so you can buy everything that you're looking for in one place get them all in one safe package shipped to you straight to your doorstep and you know those cards are going to be in the condition that you bought them in Um, there's nothing more frustrating to me is when i buy a card and i'm really specific about the printing and i'm really specific about the condition and then it shows up and it hasn't been cared for so the professionalism of card kingdom is something that i really appreciate when i'm shopping for my magic cards you can get the same level of professionalism and support the command zone at cardkingdom.com slash command. Then once those cards are in your hand and they're all spiffy and crisp and you want to keep them safe, keep them that way, put them in Ultra Pro products. Go to ultrapro.com slash command. You can support the show and support the condition of your cards and your decks by picking up some of the highest quality magic accessories in the business. They've got play mats and deck boxes, sleeves, binders, like card dividers, yep. everything that you need to keep your magic collection safe and looking good cool and organized plus lost caverns of ixalan has a ton of sweet new art in a lot of different styles that we haven't seen before so go to ultra pro look at the product see if there's anything that sparks joy maybe you're building one of these really awesome pre-cons and you can get the play mat and the deck boxes and the sleeves to match these are some clavileno sleeves yeah, you he's can doing get crazy eyes it he looks does cool. have crazy eyes yeah if you, you can <laughs> yeah if you uh, also want to be hashtag blessed just like clevelenio yeah go, go to, to ultrapro.com slash, slash command thanks everybody for listening we talked a lot about magic uh we're going to take a couple of minutes to talk about something outside the world of magic what have you been enjoying lately so what are you into <laughs> so uh i love elden ring okay i've played it a lot okay. i played it a lot when it came out yeah uh the problem is at the time when i played it i played it on playstation mm-hmm. and i went through and i platinumed it uh got all the achievements all of that i, I did like three different playthroughs okay well now i have an xbox and i was like well the dlc is coming out like in a couple months probably yeah. next year sometime well I'm going to go through and I'm going Do to it all 100% again. <laughs> it now on Xbox. So I've just started another playthrough. I'm yeah. going through it again in anticipation for uh, the DLC Shadow of the Earth Tree. And I just love it so much. I, I'm playing uh, a bandit class that I haven't mm. done before, basically doing dual daggers. So it's it's cool. very different than every other playthrough I've done. Uh, I'm like working on like, you know, getting uh, counters and, and stuff like that to like parrying to do like stabs and stuff like that. That's uh, pretty very different than every other playthrough i've done and i am just enjoying going through this game after basically not playing it for like a year Mm. and uh everything feels so fresh and and so good and i'm like really diving like every night i'm like listening to lore videos about elden rings i'm like man i'm so excited for this dlc uh with all the stuff with like mikola and and all that if you guys know elden ring lore you know what i'm talking about but uh yeah, that's, that's that awesome. is what I'm doing right now. I love that you're so dedicated to this game that you're like, well, it's a totally new system. It's exact. It's it's totally different. Yeah, it's it's totally different because now I'm you know I'm, I'm like, well, if you were to go check out my gamer tag, you'd be like, well, you've never played Elden Ring, and I'm like, I can't have that. That's you need. They need to know the, the, your prowess. Yes, and they need to see that I have that platinum that I have mm-hmm. gotten every single achievement in this game. <laughs> so I'm working on playthrough four now, and yeah. I'm probably going to get to six. And uh, yeah, that's what that that is what I'm grinding in my. Free time. I love that. I love that. I um have been 
I really wanted to get into uh, to Baldur's Gate. Yeah, that's great. And be, but it came out right when I was like moving, and oh, right yeah. when I was like right before Vegas, and I was just like, I cannot deal with it right now. I cannot get lost in it. But I am getting to the point where like the movie is almost done, and I'm like, mm, yeah, time for you to play some. Now games. it is time to disappear. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, there's nothing better to just be like, I am. Ju- I'm off work. Yeah, it is my it is my break. I am just gonna pour myself into this thing. Don't mm-hmm. talk to me. I'm going to be invisible yep. for a few hours. It's so Goodbye. great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, and I'm not much of a gamer, so I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying my hand at gaming. Yeah. You're going to play Elden Ring when the DLC comes out. I'm so bad at video games. You don't understand. <laughs> I like cannot control the camera to save my life. <laughs> My boyfriend will come in and watch me like playing Stray and yeah. I'm just like looking at the ceiling and he's like, what has happened? I'm like, I don't know. It's stuck. <laughs> You're like, I don't know what to do. I go down and rotate way. the camera. I also have terrible direction. Like oh, I have a terrible sense sure. of direction. So a lot of open world video games, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've been in this woods for hours and I don't even think it's the woods I was supposed to go in, <laughs> but I can't get out. And he's like, you just have to go back and talk to that merchant you've talked to before. And you're like, I have no idea. Like, I, b- I believe you that he exists, I'm but sure, I don't know. I'm sure I'm supposed, I don't know where he is. Yeah. And he's like, you just go left. And I was like, there's no GPS in these. <laughs> yeah. That is very much a, uh, if you, <laughs> if you're not good at directions, Elden Ring is, <laughs> it's probably not the best. Cause like there, there's very little handholding yeah. in, the, in the game and it is very easy for you to oh get lost. And yep. like when you're, especially when you do your first playthrough, uh, like the ongoing theme of the deck of the deck of the game is there's more. Yeah. Like you're, you're like, you're playing the game. And then like the first time you go to an underground area, you're like, what there's <laughs> there's there's a second map and like the game is just full of that yeah. like you're like oh I, you know i've explored this really well i, I really ought to handle on it and then it's like no you don't nope you <laughs> so uh you think you do there is definitely a big learning curve it's it's a blast to do blind yep. but you definitely need to have a pretty solid i'm getting to the direction. point where i'm like you know what if i play enough video games really really badly maybe i will be passable uh so that, that's what we're doing i have faith Someday. i don't know i played stray and then they gave me a gun and i was like i don't know how to use it <laughs> i can't figure out how to point it they're like just move the camp nope i don't know how stray was really sweet so though. then i so then i quit yeah Yep. Yeah. I was all about the gathering the stuff. And yeah. then they were like, here's a gun. I'm like, Mm-mm. You're like, Mm-mm. I came here for the kitty game. I don't know. This I was is, trying to, I was knocking simulator. paint cans off the building, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, someday, someday. Uh, I believe you. We'll get you to Elden Ring. We'll, we'll get you that platinum. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, do I doubt it. Boy, do I doubt it. Thank you so much for listening here. Before we go, we're going to say thank you to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. Thank you to Eric Lem, Megan Yip, Garov Galati, Jordan Pridgen, Jamie Black, Arthur Meadowcroft, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Sam Waldo, Evan Limberger, Katie Cole, Mitch Trafford, Josh Lee Kwai, Jimmy Wong, and of course, to Damon Lenz. Me! For taking the time and for probably editing this. Yeah, probably. Hi, yeah. Damon. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Long time no see. Uh, we really do. I know we've talked about it a few times. Mm. We really need to make a, a Command Zone rap i know i know yeah hey, we're close every time you do it i'm sitting here dancing i'm like i can see it it's, it's just on the horizon just out of reach <laughs> but it keeps changing depending on who's in the seat so yeah that's it's, true it's gonna be tricky well we'll we'll get a composer in here yeah we'll get a rap composer in here. <laughs> thank you for listening we will see you next time peace For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>